He got reincarnated and then disowned for kind of knowing dark magic. Imagine your life sucks. You get this guy and then disowned. What the hell? Oh my god. Anyways, not all was grim since he got adopted by his uncle and it turns out that dark magic is kind of busted. No, 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 not, not that kind of busted. Anyways, dark magic basically means he controls all the magic elements, but because he is a demon baby after all, he decides to hide it from others. Anyways, in his previous life, our protagonist Zenichi became an office worker right after he finished his high school and just like every single one of us he absolutely hated his job until one day though when he suddenly showed up in some strange looking heavenly place where an angel like girl told him that he didn't belong to the world that he was born into this girl turned out to be some heavenly creature and she seemed to know exactly how bad his life as a day-to-day -day office worker was and so she offered him a new life elsewhere that would suit him much better and so he got born into another world However, the crystal that was appraising his magic attribute turned pitch black and our protagonist turned out to be a demon child of all things, which the family he was born into despised so much that they wanted to get rid of him somehow. My bro can't catch a break. From hating your life because of your job to hating your life because of your family. Mwah this ought to be a good story. So Zenichi figured out that this new world actually might be even worse than his previous one. He thought he would be killed, but instead the next thing he saw was a man and a woman who seemed really pleased by seeing him and they were saying that he looked clever and that he'd be staying with them. We then learned that after his dad dropped him, he was taken in by his uncle. My bro started crying since he was glad that he wasn't killed right after spawning in another world and his aunt held him so that he immediately calmed down. His uncle noticed that the sun was shining bright and because of that he decided to name our protagonist Kyle which meant the sun in some ancient language. <laughs> Great idea, author of this manga. I'm gonna name my son Ricky Terry Smudge because in the ancient language it means peace and serenity. What ancient language you may ask yourself? I'm not gonna tell you. If you don't know your ancient languages, I'm sorry. Anyways, the ant loved this suggestion. Now, five years later, our protagonist already seemed to be settled with his new parents, Demio and Claire, and they were now planning on going on a family trip that they do a couple of times each year. They brought two guards with them with whom our protagonist was pretty familiar. We then learned that this was the first time they were visiting a city called Eris, since this time our protagonist was a bit older, so they could go a little bit further, and there they could also see the sea. Kyle was really excited about it, and we also learned that even though it's been five years since the day our protagonist came into this world, and even though he was taken care of by two great people, he still didn't forget about that day when his real parents abandoned him and because of that he did a lot of studying to learn about this world where he learned that there were eight different attributes with each being represented by different color and the children would get appraised as soon as they get born and this attribute would have a huge influence in their life. When Kyle learned that his dark attribute drew powers from the demons he feared abandonment from his new parents as well if they ever found out but to his surprise they already knew this and and still chose to take him in. His dad noticed that our protagonist was making a serious face while he was thinking and so he asked if he was thinking about games he could play in the next city and Kyle just went with the act but thinking to himself how he really enjoyed his new life and he was grateful to that heavenly creature that gave him all this. The sun was setting and they were close to their destination but now as they were passing through a forest our protagonist felt that there was something evil in it and then suddenly he felt a creep run through his body as he shouted to them to stop the carriage. His parents were confused, but our protagonist sensed that there were some beasts ahead of them on the road, and this was soon confirmed by one of their guards that went on the lookout, who heard the magic beasts. And while Kyle's mom praised him for noticing this, our protagonist had another vision that these beasts were attacking somebody, and then he suddenly just ran out of the carriage, telling his parents that he had to help some people that were getting attacked. His parents were even more confused now, and were telling him to go back but Kyle just apologized to them and then telling them that he could actually use magic he used his barrier of wind and created a wall of wind around the carriage to prevent his parents and guards from reaching him and then he threw one of the guards off of a horse with his bullet wind magic and took that horse his parents were really worried about him but he knew that he had to help those people without endangering their lives and so he rode off meanwhile we see another carriage with a few guards being attacked by all kinds of magic 
magic monsters. This carriage had a princess in it, so the guards vowed to defend her majesty until the very end. The monsters were surrounding the carriage, and just when the chief guard realized that they were done for, suddenly a swirling wind magic came through and blasted off some of the monsters, and we see that it was our protagonist, and this was his first time using this wind magic. The guards were shocked seeing Kyle, a little kid, being able to use wind magic at that level. And then our protagonist hopped off of a horse and sent it back while he faced these horrifying monsters together with the rest of the guards. Seeing that they were completely encircled, the captain started panicking and then Kyle commanded them to get closer to the carriage, which they surprisingly obeyed and then our protagonist conjured up a light protection wall which was really powerful as any monsters that came at it were eliminated. Captain was shocked to see that besides wind magic, our protagonist could use light magic as well. Kyle then changed his demeanor and said that he could go all out on them and the monsters were nervous about it. And then as he wanted to get it over with quickly, he summoned rain of some kind, which again left the captain in shock, since this was the third attribute Kyle was able to use. The monsters roared and came at our protagonist with full might, but it was already over for them because our protagonist summoned thunder rain that sent blazing bolts of lightning coming down on the monsters, electric electrocuting each one of them with high power. Captain and the guards looked at our protagonist all flabbergasted and Kyle approached them back with his childish behavior and just as the captain was about to ask Kyle of his identity, our protagonist started getting rid of the magical beast bones and he used dark magic power for this which additionally baffled the captain. Before the captain got a chance to ask him any further questions, our protagonist was already on his way back to his parents and even the princess came Came out of the carriage at that time, interested in Kyle, but my bro was already gone. Now back at his parents' carriage, we see that his dad was pretty pissed off at him for running off like that, and even one of the guards named L told him that they were there to protect him, but then the other guard called Max told L that they wouldn't be able to protect our protagonist because as he followed Kyle, he saw our protagonist obliterating those magical beasts using different magical elements. And hearing this, everyone was shocked, especially for the fact that Kyle was able to use all different elements when he was just a dark attribute. But our protagonist just told him that he'd explain it once they got back home as there was a secret behind his power and that black crystal. His parents were impatient, but our protagonist insisted him showing them how it all worked once they returned home. And when they came back, we could see Kyle at their family training field, where he created a ball of water in which he poured in different colors to represent different abilities, like water, thunder, and so on, until he went through all the available attributes. This was surprising to Kyle's parents since Max told them that he only used three attributes and with a quite a bit of pride he showed them that he could use the five typical attributes and as if things couldn't get any more shocking he casually added that both dark and light attributes were in his arsenal as well. And the real revelation came when he said that once you mixed up all of the attributes together the color of the water ball would go pitch black just like it did when he was a baby where the crystal showed black color, the same as with the dark attribute. His mom thought that this is amazing, but his dad still had some suspicions, like when in the hell did a 5 year old learn all of this stuff? And prepared for this, our protagonist made a cut in space, and out of nothing, he pulled out a book, telling his dad that he just followed the guidance from one of the books he found in his dad's library, and his dad immediately recognized the book to be from Ray Zack, who was his old friend, so he kinda felt proud about that. Kyle was pleasantly surprised that his dad was friends with the author of the book, which he found amazing as it literally led him through all the stages of development as a mage, from beginner all the way to advanced. And right as they were talking about that, one of the maids notified Kyle's dad that they had a visitor and soon enough we find out that it was a lady dressed in black who seemed to be an old friend of our protagonist's dad and Kyle's dad was really happy to see her and besides that, our protagonist recognized that this was actually actually an elf lady and he was really fascinated with that. We then learned that elves were a special species among many others in this world, where besides living for a long time and being a rare sight, they also were known for having crazy powerful magic that not many could match. We then learned that this lady elf's name was Miluna and it had been a long time since they saw each other. 
Kyle's parents then introduced our protagonist to her, and here we find out that she was actually an author of that book that Kyle loved so much, so he went bananas when he heard about this. When he gathered himself, Kyle thanked her for writing the book with which she was able to learn so much about magic, and she said that in the case there was some use from it, she was happy that she made the book. When she asked him about magic, Kyle couldn't contain his passion for it, and his parents added that he was a genius at it as well, but since Miluna didn't express any interest in it, Kyle's parents asked our protagonist to demonstrate his ability for her. Miluna then took off her black robes and confidently asked our protagonist to show her what he had, where she'd only defend while he would attack her with whatever he wanted to. While his parents were cheering for him, our protagonist wanted to know the amount of power he was allowed to use for the attack, and Miluna told him that he didn't have to worry about that and could use anything he felt comfortable with, even his most powerful attacks, as she was pretty sure that with her three magic attributes, there was nothing she wouldn't be able to defend. Our protagonist went with this and then started conjuring up massive amounts of energy about him that Miluna found shocking. When he charged up, then an intense beam of light gathered around him with a lift of his arm and Miluna started panicking a little bit since she had no clue what the hell was going on right now. Kyle then continued, where in one hand he combined four different elements and turned them into different spears and just as she looked in shock, at him being able to use four different elements in one go, Kyle used his other hand to create another four spears with four other magic attributes and now he had eight magical attributes being used at the same time and as if things couldn't get any worse for Miluna, our protagonist continued again, combining the spears into one crazy powerful spear and she knew that it was bad news for her. However, Kyle's parents, not knowing how dangerous this was for her, kept on casually cheering up our protagonist, and just when Miluna thought to herself that she didn't want anything to do with this, our protagonist already fired off that powerful spear at her with all that he had. The destructive spear was heading at her with an incredible speed, and she immediately in panic started calling up some spirits to defend her before it was too late, and then suddenly spirits showed up already busy with each building its own barrier that would protect Miluna. Kyle's spear went through them, and then there was a huge blast with blind in flash that even shook the trees. Kyle's parents were now worried about both Kyle and Miluna and so they were calling out to them and as the dust settled we could see that Miluna was fine as she picked up her hat saying that even with someone in three different spirits she was barely able to block that attack but then when she looked at the destruction our protagonist's magic power caused she knew he was a big deal and then she heard Kyle's voice again saying magic power arrow and when she turned around in fear she got hit by one of those toy arrows and out of the dust there was Kyle smiling and then telling her that since he made a bunch of mess he needed to fix it up a bit and then just a bit later we see that he managed to return everything back to normal as it was and everyone looked in amazement. Once they got back in the house for a cup of tea Melona noticed that our protagonist looked like a perfectly normal kid and then as this confused her she insisted asking Kyle's parents about him, but his parents just kept saying the same thing, how he was just their kid, adding that they understand her surprise as he really was a genius at magic. After some time, she gave up asking that and then suggested that they should send Kyle to the National Magic Academy and hearing this, our protagonist was really shocked. This academy was a special place for many different reasons, like not only could you learn magic there, but also you can make friends and even get political power eventually. And when Miluna asked our protagonist if he wanted to go there and compete with other students from around the globe, Kyle couldn't contain his excitement of how much he wanted to go there, and so without much delay, his parents gave a passionate approval of this, with his mom saying that he'd become famous. While our protagonist was hugging his parents from gratitude, Miluna was thinking to herself how sad they probably felt. Miluna then told our protagonist that he'd have to get himself a tutor before the academy started, 
as others already had tutors from the beginning. When he heard this, Kyle told Miluna that he wanted her as his tutor, and when Miluna showed some reluctance, our protagonist said that he learned everything he knew about magic from the book she wrote, and since he knew that there were still many things he didn't understand, it only made sense to him that it should be her, the one that wrote the book. Miluna gave it a bit of a thought, and then thinking that because his overwhelming power might be a bit too much for other tutors, she'd take that role, but she told him that she wouldn't take it easy on him just because she was friends with his parents and he was really excited about it. Some time had passed since then and we see that the carriage came for our protagonist to finally go to the academy. His parents were escorting him and advising him about stuff and we now see that Kyle actually grew and he was 12 years old now. Outside there was Miluna waiting to say bye to her only student before he left. Miluna then told him that she had nothing else to teach him and that from there on he should just believe in himself and do his his best and he thanked her for everything. While his parents were behind him crying, he created the wind sound block and then his master Miluna told him that he should never lose sight of the dark forces that were present everywhere in the world that would not be so obvious at first, but they would surely grow in power. He let her know that he understood and then Miluna added that he should take care of the bracelet she gave him. At this point the parents were already protesting against Miluna getting Kyle all to herself for the his last moments and so then our protagonist approached them and as soon as he looked at them he felt so grateful for everything they did for him that he never repaid and there were so many things rushing through his mind of what he wanted to say but at the moment he only could cry and genuinely thank them. This made his parents cry even more as they embraced our protagonist and as he was looking back at his parents and his master Miluna he was thinking of how these people gave him all the love and knowledge he needed but now a new chapter was starting for him as he'd have his own journey at the National Magic Academy. We now learn that the National Magic Academy was in the royal capital and was run by the country and was widely considered to be one of the best schools for magic where all the talents from around the country would come to make a name for themselves and it was to this academy that our protagonist, who was the only person in the world that was able to control all the magic attributes, finally came. And inside the academy, we see that all the freshmen have already arrived and the instructor was telling them that they'd be divided into three groups and then tested with three different exams that would test their magic strength, amount and control. We then learned that these tests would determine which class they'd belong to depending on how they did on the test, you know like Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Slytherin and what's the fourth one? I always forget. Well, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, I don't know man! <laughs> Anyways, being in a better class would make their life at the academy much better so they would have to do their best on these tests. And while the other students were really worried about how they do on a test, our protagonist was actually excited. And just a bit later, we see our protagonist come out in front of the three testers who told him to place his hand on a lion statue, which was supposed to measure his magic power, where the more he got the better for him. And then suddenly that lion statue's eyes went full bright and the testers were utterly shocked seeing this, thinking that Kale somehow hacked it. And as our protagonist was trying to explain that he didn't do anything, the numbers on the line showed first all nines and then suddenly it went to all zeros which was the worst possible score anyone could get. And after that we could see that other students couldn't get tested because the machine was broken. Then at the exam hall number 2, at the next test, our protagonist's magic control was measured by how many of the flying objects he could hit and just before his test started, he remembered Miluna recommending him not to use all of his magic attributes if it wasn't really necessary and just to stick with wind magic while hiding the rest. After calculating that there were around 200 targets, he limited his wind magic to the necessary amount and then created a bunch of wind balls that all went off into the air and since he wanted to achieve full marks on this one, he ordered his wind balls to take out all of the targets in the air. And since since it all happened at once, the instructor was absolutely flabbergasted seeing this as all of the targets were eliminated. But to his surprise, the machine only captured one as his score and this probably happened because they were all hit at the very exact same time and even the instructor was confused but he couldn't do anything about it. And so somehow Kyle, despite being the strongest mage, got the worst score 
in this test as well. Our protagonist then went to the third and final exam hall, where he was welcomed by a tough looking instructor who told him that he'd test his magic strength there, where Kyle was supposed to hit the golem with the best magic he had in order to calculate his magic power. The instructor noticed that our protagonist looked a little bit moody and so he gave him a slap on the back to encourage him a bit and even though the slap was quite strong, our protagonist didn't budge and instead casually asked for clarifications for his test. Kyle wanted to know if he could go full out on the golem since he was concerned with damage in the golem, but the instructor found this funny and assured him that the golem was extremely strong and his attack wouldn't do much to it. And as our protagonist was now facing that golem, the winds started gathering around him, which kinda shocked the instructor. He felt an enormous power being bottled up around Kyle and our protagonist was thinking to him himself that he needed to get full marks on this test at least because otherwise he'd embarrass his master Miluna if he didn't. Suddenly our protagonist conjured up his magic wind fang that were basically jewels made from the wind and the instructor was flabbergasted after seeing this as he had never seen such a powerful wind magic before. And then Kyle attacked that golem with those wind jaws that opened up and beat on that golem so hard that the entire wing of the academy shook which drew attention from some people outside who thought it was a tremor going on. Just a moment later, we see the instructor on the floor in shock and we see that the golem was completely busted and shattered to pieces. Even our protagonist was surprised with this and when it came to this test, he got a score of unmeasurable and we see that our protagonist was bummed out for destroying that golem, but the instructor told him that instead of worrying about that, he should go attend the class division speech and suddenly Kyle's mood lightened up and so he bowed to his instructor and left the testing hall. And just as the instructor was making a call to report on a measuring tool not working anymore, a woman showed up asking the instructor about the explosion from earlier that caused the tremor. This lady, named Freya, who was one of the teachers at the academy, was really curious about our protagonist to be able to cause such a destruction. And then the instructor went on to say that even though at first Kyle might look like any average weak looking kid, he was actually really powerful to be able to destroy the golem, which was unheard of until now, and the way the instructor saw our protagonist was basically like a monster. And then Freya said that because that sounded pretty promising, she was hoping he ended up in her class. And in the central hall, our protagonist got assigned to F class due to the results he got, or basically didn't get, but he was still being optimistic and thinking that in any case he'd be able to get new knowledge in any of the classes. Our protagonist was pretty enthusiastic to find the F1 class, and before too long, following the map, he came across a wooden building with chairs and desks made of wood as well, which was different from other buildings as everything looked kinda shabby. Here he saw a girl looking really sad and disappointed and when he asked her if she was doing fine, she told him that she got the lowest possible class because she was so bad at magic even if she was from a noble family. And she wasn't the only one thinking that she was talentless, as all the other students that got in looked equally depressed and disappointed and Kyle had no clue why that was. The noble girl then told him that they felt that way because they were nobles, which meant that they got the best possible magic education but somehow still got into the worst possible class. She was also saying that this was an embarrassment to their families and that they might cause their families to lose their reputation because of them and this was awful. However, our protagonist couldn't move on from her saying that she didn't have any talents when he could clearly see that she had a huge amount of mana, which was higher than other girls he saw, and then he inspiringly told her that regardless of what class they were in, they'd still be thought by the best teachers in the academy, which meant that they'd have a chance to get better and discover new talents, and this really did draw her attention to him, and when she looked at him, she was completely shocked and then panickingly told him her name, which was Kite Frederick. We then learned that she was actually that girl that he saved years ago in the forest from those monsters, and she was actually looking for him everywhere but couldn't find him. She then started telling him about that experience, but right then, teacher Freya came in with a loud vicious shout that made everyone terrified, including Kite. However, our protagonist looked like he was into it kinda, and then Freya continued saying that they ended up in her class because their motivation was weak and then she 
introduced herself as their head teacher and then she noticed that among a bunch of scared faces there was our protagonist that not only wasn't scared of her but looked rather enthusiastic and she immediately knew that it was the same student that broke the test in Golem. Kyle was thinking to himself how awesome she was for putting magic in her voice. Freya then continued saying that she didn't like their disappointed faces because even if they weren't happy with getting assigned to the F class and disappointing their families, they had to make peace with the fact that they were an embarrassment for the whole mage world and those words really hurt a lot of students including Kite and even our protagonist felt it. Freya then added that they still had to do their best even if they couldn't change the fact that they would always belong to an F class. As soon as she said this, our protagonist raised his hand to speak and Freya thought that he'd disagree with her, but he actually agreed that good students should be treated in a better way and this surprised other students that felt even more disappointed now and then Kyle continued by asking Freya if it was possible for Academy to treat F class better if they managed to prove to be better than other students. Kite was confused by this question and teacher Freya was annoyed saying that she already explained that it was impossible for an F class to ever surpass other classes no matter how much they tried as she already witnessed many other students try that only to lose against the students from stronger classes and this was basically because in the magic world talent was a necessary condition for success. And we could see that her memories were full of her students giving up after displaying fiery motivation to achieve something and she didn't want them to build up any hopes. Our protagonist then confidently said that that was until now, adding that they'd be the first F class to get away from that talent curse and everyone was shocked hearing this. Freya was utterly flabbergasted by this as she remembered her old memories of her former students and how she offered them her full support and then she told our protagonist that she would sacrifice herself to help them with the academy's treatment of them if they ever achieved that miracle and everyone was shocked hearing this including Kyle who was additionally motivated by her offer. Sometimes later we see our protagonist at the shared dormitory he would be staying at for the next three years and it was pretty luxurious and Kyle loved it and right as he was walking about and exploring it he heard a fight happening and saw a crowd of students gathered in the common room and it turns out that a guy from class A named Turk was bullying another guy from class F called Delia saying that his presence as an F class student there bothered him. Delia was saying that Turk was too harsh but Turk didn't care and was about to punch him again because he was still arguing and right then our protagonist came in between them ignoring Turk while telling Delia that they were in the same class and as soon as Delia saw him he recognized Kyle as the guy from the class that confronted teacher Freya. When Turk heard that our protagonist was also in the F class he wanted to hit both of them but as soon as he swung our protagonist just did some lightning quick evasion and Turk fell to the floor. While Kyle was telling him that he shouldn't have swung at him, Turk was trying to figure out what the hell just happened. The others were telling Turk that he was embarrassing himself by letting an F class do that to him. And then our protagonist called Turk and told him in the most menacing way possible that there was no reason for him to hurt Delia and Turk was utterly terrified of our protagonist's scary presence. Turk was lost as to what to do and then suddenly one of his classmates, Sykes, showed up and Delia immediately recognized him to be from a famous old Delight family that was known for producing many great mage swordsmen and he then continued saying that Sykes here was one of their best prodigies. Kyle was really interested in him and then Sykes calmly said that he was fine with anybody using the common room including F class and he admitted that it was Turk that caused all the commotion but he also noticed that our protagonist was using magic there accusingly adding that Kyle used wind to knock Turk down and besides that he put some magic in his voice as well when he threatened Turk. Our protagonist then said that he was trying to hide that and Turk was now all angry for Kyle using magic in a sneaky way but Sykes quickly shut him up for not even being able to recognize that our protagonist used magic in the first place. But since Sykes was doubtful that a mere F class could trick a bunch of A class students he wanted to know who our protagonist actually was and just then a dormitory manager Glacia showed up trying to figure out what was going on and Kyle told her that since Sykes and Turk 
Turk insulted his friend, he wanted him to apologize to Delia. However, Turk didn't accept this and so bickering started and Glacia shouted that they should all go back to their rooms, but Freya then appeared, telling Glacia that she shouldn't do that as that wouldn't solve anything because fired up kids at this age would escalate the situation even more if not treated properly. And then another teacher showed up, A-class teacher Raygot, and he agreed with Freya, and then Freya said that only a fight between Sykes and our protagonist could resolve this issue. Kyle looked completely fine with this, while Sykes was kinda worried. Turk was telling our protagonist that there was no way that he'd be able to beat Sykes, adding that if he lost again, that he should just leave the academy for good, as no F-class student deserved being in the academy to begin with. Other students found this condition unreasonable, but our protagonist was quick to accept it, confidently adding that in case he won, Sykes would have to join them in the F class. Everyone was shocked hearing this, and then Turk said that he'd just apologize to Delia so that it wouldn't come to that, but our protagonist insisted they do it with the battle, as in that case Turk wouldn't have to apologize. Sykes understood that this was a bet, and then told Kyle that there was no backing away from this, adding that our protagonist had no clue with whom he was messing with, and then with a growing, menacing energy from Sykes, he said that it was impossible for Kyle to win this duel, and while everyone was terrified of this, our protagonist looked completely unfazed as he confidently said that he'd defeat Sykes. Just like other students, Sykes was surprised by this response, but he confirmed that he accepted the bet and as soon as Freya heard this, she invited everyone to the training room where the battle between these two would take place. And as they were heading there, we could see the whole F class was lacking confidence while class A was full of it. And just a bit later, we see that they had arrived at the indoor training facility where their battle would happen. And just when our protagonist thought that it would be pretty small, as soon as he entered, he realized how huge it was and see Seeing him surprised, teacher Rega told him that the training facility was made by Rome Espacio, who was one of the founding fathers of the academy, and he was also the last one to use space magic. Rega then also explained that this training area also had a special feature that would create a protective barrier as soon as the battle would begin, and in that way protect anything outside of that bubble which was self-repairable too. Our protagonist found this extremely exciting, as that meant that he could go all out, and Rega confirmed it. However, Freya looked a bit worried and then called our protagonist over because she remembered that Kyle destroyed that testing room with Golem, but since she was interested to see it herself, she got excited herself and just gave some words of encouragement to our protagonist and then Glacia told Psyche and Kyle to take their positions on the stage. When they got up, Glacia asked them to get their wands ready but instead of a wand, Psyche pulled out a blade that he'd use as a catalyst for his magic, and Regat noticed that this wasn't just any sword, but a sword that had fire spirit inside, and this could only mean that Psyche's family had really high hopes for him to give him such a prized possession, and on the other hand, our bro just used some stick as his magic catalyst, which other students laughed at, but it didn't bother Kyle. Even class F students were disappointed seeing this, and we learned that wands were actually pretty important important in battles, as magic power would increase depending on how high the level of the wand was, and our protagonist used the most basic stick he could find. Glacia then went on to explain the rules, where basically any injuries that they get during the fight would be healed right away as soon as they left the battleground, and if at any point their life was endangered, the battle would be over right there, and so she encouraged them to fight as hard as they could, which other students found out of character for Glacia. She then also repeated the conditions for losing the battle for both Psyche and our protagonist, adding some more rules regarding the battle. The explanation was over and we could see that both Psyche and our protagonist looked ready and so Glacia then announced the beginning of the magic battle. Psyche and Kyle were staring at each other in their fighting positions and while class A students were loudly cheering for Psyche, the F class students were praying that our protagonist just survived this. Not delaying this too much, Psyche immediately activated his sword that engulfed with fire and he was sure that he'd finish it quickly, but our protagonist didn't even look like he was in any guard and was just admiring the magic sword on Psyche while Psyche felt annoyed with our protagonist because he looked so relaxed. Psyche then threw a bunch of fireballs at Kyle and just when A-class students thought it was over for our protagonist, Kyle used his little stick to divert all of the fireballs away from him. Psyche was shocked and 
Raycat couldn't believe that Psyche would miss such a clear target and so he knew with certainty that it had to be our protagonist that changed the trajectory of all those fireballs and this made him doubt Kyle's class to be an F. Psyche also recognized that our protagonist used the same type of wind magic here that he used on Turk and then Kyle started teasing Psyche how this was the power of his sword and that he was more interested in his own power and this triggered Psyche so hard that he clenched his teeth and then conjured up a powerful looking flame storm that he was sure our protagonist wouldn't be able to escape. And as a response, Kyle sent his own tornado which Psyche thought was weaker but then a strange thing happened as the two powers collided. They created a wind chasm made from fire and wind that surrounded them, completely cutting them off from the audience. Psyche was confused but our protagonist was planning this all along as he wanted nobody to see his next advanced moves. As our protagonist was conjuring some stuff up, he was telling baffled Psyche that the best way to counter fire magic was with water magic, but Psyche had no clue why Kyle would be saying this if he could only use wind magic. Kyle then said that he figured out something better and then when his hand started producing fire, he said to Psyche that he'd use Psyche's power against him. Psyche was completely shocked seeing that our protagonist could use two different types of magic and then Kyle told him that since he knew that Psyche had more power than he showed that he wanted him to attack him with the best he had. Outside nobody could see anything because of that wind swirling around the battle stage and Glacier wanted to stop the battle because they didn't know what was going on but Freya told her that it was unnecessary and that it was probably Kyle's trick as he wanted to hide something and when Glacier asked more about it Freya said that she wasn't sure but she knew that our protagonist was using some powerful magic inside. And back inside it was at that point that Psyche realized that our protagonist was pretty powerful and that he had to go all out if he wanted to defeat him. He quickly saw a strategy he could use and then chanting some stuff, he called upon the fire spirit that was in the sword to use his full power and then in a really dramatic way with fire circling around his sword and him, Psyche swore by his family to defeat our protagonist. Kyle was just patiently observing and just a moment after we could see that Psyche already created a powerful sword completely engulfed in fire that he called Flare Saver. Psyche then called out to our protagonist telling him that he'd burn him with hellfire itself and as our protagonist recognized this attack he then told Psyche that he was forced to show him something and then he started conjuring his own fire and Psyche noticed that the fire was changing color until it became blue and turned into a mighty looking wolf that towered over Psyche with flames raging everywhere. Then our protagonist casually told him that this was the fire magic he used and Psyche was flabbergasted realizing that this blue flame packed even more heat than the red flame. Psyche knew the greatness of this but he reminded himself that he had to continue and then he dashed at our protagonist to attack him saying that as the inheritor of his family there was no way he'd lose this battle. However, our protagonist kept his calm demeanor and then ordered his blue wolf to devour the red flame and we could see the heat increasing even more and the huge fire jaw opening and heading towards Psyche that could only stare at it in horror. And then just a moment later we see Psyche's sword spinning in the air and the wind that was surrounding them was also disappearing and the sword then fell right beside Psyche that was on his knees which shocked everyone. Turk couldn't believe seeing Psyche like that and Psyche was thinking to himself that his most powerful magic move got completely obliterated by the power he had never seen before and what was even crazier was that our protagonist looked like he was still fresh for another round even after using that powerful magic. Kyle asked him to attack him with something else but Psyche understood that he had no chance against Kyle and even though reluctantly he admitted defeat before everyone as his sword cracked with damage. Everyone was shocked and then Glacia announced our protagonist as a victor and his class F classmates got really emotional about this. While Raygat was baffled by it, Freya was thinking to herself that our protagonist went over the top by breaking Psyche's sword. Psyche was really disappointed with himself but then our protagonist walked up to him and welcomed him to the class F, adding that he enjoyed their duel and also that he wanted them to grow strong together. Psyche at first was baffled by this 
but then told Kyle that he actually thought that it might be useful for him to study with someone like Kyle as he could learn from our protagonist. They shook hands and we could see that class A students really disliked this situation, especially Turk. Reget was impressed with our protagonist's talent and he was curious about what would happen after Psyche joined F class and even Freya had no clue but she was excited for the next class as she had some plans for their extracurricular activities. Meanwhile, we see that hooded sinister looking creature was observing the academy from afar and he seemed to be familiar with our protagonist and he wanted the destruction of the academy in the most brutal way where he'd take out every single student. And while this looming threat was a about, Kyle and the rest of the students celebrating were completely unaware of it. As the new class started, we could see that everyone was stared at Psyche who became a new student at the F class. And a bit later, they had their first class of practice, where they do some target practice. And while some students had trouble even hitting the targets, both Kyle and Sykes were blasting them with ease and other students were really impressed with them. It wasn't strange seeing Sykes performing at that level, but they were really surprised that Kyle wasn't any worse than him. They heard about the great battle that they had and some students were a bit demotivated seeing that these two were so far away from them in terms of level that they couldn't even imagine ever catching up. And while Kite was having trouble with her water magic, Psyche was thinking to himself that our protagonist's magic was really good, that there was nobody in the class A that could compare and so he just wanted to continue training with him in order to surpass our protagonist and right as Sykes suggested that he and Kyle go and practice long range magic, Delia came in begging our protagonist to teach him how to use magic in a better way. Sykes stayed quiet as our protagonist was explaining and instructing Delia about shooting magic and seeing this other students also joined asking Kyle to show them tips to improve their magic as well. Sykes then lost his patience and walked away saying that he'd trained by himself while we could see our protagonist encircled by a bunch of students listening to his explanations. Sometimes later we see Kite really disappointed in himself as during the class she was the only one that couldn't shoot her magic and so she now wanted to use the advice our protagonist told her after the class so that she wouldn't hold everyone else back. After a bunch of failed attempts, she then remembered that Kyle told her that shooting magic had three steps, with the first one being forming the magic, second being deciding on the amount of magic, and third being having the control over shooting it outwardly. He also told her that failing in either one of these three steps would make her fail in shooting magic, so she should focus on keeping those three things perfect, and then holding the connection between the magic released using a magic thread, where as long as she maintains the connection her magic would work. This time she was sure she could do it and so she started with deep breath and then with great concentration she actually managed to form a nice floating water ball but she got so excited seeing it that her connection broke and the water ball exploded in her face completely soaking her in water. She then started crying thinking to herself that she was the only one in the class that couldn't perform that magic and right then our protagonist showed up and Kite was surprised to see him. Kyle told her that he also wanted to do some practice and then he handed her a tissue to dry herself as she was both embarrassed and grateful to him. He then pulled out some donuts and treated her with it and she found it strange that he could keep all of those things in his basket but we could see that it was actually a special basket called Shadow Basket and apparently he could store many things in there including the whole black tea set that he straight pulled out from there. Kite gave that tea a try and she thought that it was really tasty and so our protagonist explained that it was actually a pretty well known tea that his dad worked with. Kite then told him that even though she was following all the steps he told her to do, she still couldn't do the magic and she felt as talentless as ever but Kyle told her that he really believed that she had a talent. Kite at first didn't want to accept this as she thought he was just trying to make her feel better but he insisted and then even said that he wanted to see her do it in front of him. She was surprised seeing with what passion he asked her to do this and then accepted it after all. She felt really distracted since Kyle was there but she knew that she had to focus if she didn't want to fail in front of him. She then gave it a try and it was the same as before where she managed to create that water ball 
but then it just exploded again. Kyle, observing this, noticed that something was off, and then he suddenly realized that it was probably because there were two powers working together, where one was obstructing the other, and then just a moment later, we could see that Kyle knew what he needed to do, and so he then walked off to his shadow basket and picked up a ring that he gave to Kite, telling her that since she still didn't have the control of her mana, that she'd have to wear that ring for some time, and then he asked her to give it a try one more time. Kaito was really embarrassed thinking how she got a ring from Kyle, even though it was a ring to help her magic. You know, girls and the rings when you give them rings. Anyways, she then tried using her water magic again, and to her surprise, this time the water ball didn't explode when she formed it, and then our protagonist told her to shoot it, which she did with success, as she even managed to hit the target from pretty far away. This really motivated Kite, and she wanted to stay in the practice field to do some more training, and we could see that teacher Freya was watching this all, and thinking to herself that she was happy with how things were going for Kyle, and she also realized that our protagonist was becoming a pretty big shot in their class, however her biggest worry was Sykes, and in the meantime we could see Sykes practicing by himself, but he was too aggressive with how he approached his practice, as he was burning trees with his fireballs, and we could see the reason he did it was because he was disappointed with the power he could use without his sword and so he wanted to become better at that so that he could become the best and we also learned that soon there would be extracurricular lesson happening in the demon forest which was a pretty intense place. Finally the time came for the extracurricular class and I always, <laughs> you see I always have a mini stroke when I try to pronounce this word extracurricular. Now, we learned that a long time ago, one of the teachers from the academy managed to beat a powerful dungeon, and that same teacher eventually took control of the dungeon by using his power, and since that day, that dungeon was controlled by humans and used as a training place for their academy. And Raygat introduced that dungeon to be named Demon Forest, and students hearing this were really terrified. We also learned that this special class was all first year students, but since it was completely under their control, Freya assured the scared students that there was nothing to be afraid of. She then continued saying that after they entered a magic circle, they would be randomly spawned somewhere in the demon forest, and then in case that they defeat the boss, they'd be returned back from the forest, just as they would be after 6 hours of being there. And also in case they get injured, or they express a desire to be returned, they'd be brought back as well. Rega then explained that their test would be recorded by a badge, which would keep track of every monster they eliminated, or anything else for which they'd get points that would be calculated at the end. The first three places would get some special gifts like magic items and stuff, and while other students were just occupied with surviving this mess, our protagonist was really excited about the magic gifts that they could get. Turk then came in saying that all of the top spots would be taken by the A class, so Kyle didn't even have to think about it, but our protagonist then asked Turk if he finally came to apologize to Delia, and this really triggered him as he was thinking of how terrible the class F was. And then he noticed Sykes standing alone, and he thought to himself that Sykes was probably still not used to being in the F class, and he then approached him and started teasing him, and even saying that it was his fault that the whole class A became a butt of other students jokes and this really triggered Sykes that just gave him a death stare that really scared Turk but then another guy showed up who was also one of the big shots from the A class Keljura, a wind user, and he told Turk to stop teasing Sykes as he was still from a noble family, even though he went to the same class as the biggest nobodies. This drew Sykes' attention pretty quick, and then another guy showed up, also a big shot, named Garden? I, that's a nice name? A guy that used earth magic, okay, it makes sense now, and he added that they had to come to terms with Sykes just being a weakling. And these two and Sykes were considered to be the best freshmen in their generation, and they weren't in good relations because of their families. Garden was pretty confident that he and Kalyura would take the first two places, but Sykes didn't seem to be interested in this petty argument with them. Turk then added that Sykes had no chance against their top two, because he lost against an F-class student. Right then, to everyone's surprise, our protagonist calmly walked up in front of Sykes, and when they asked him what he was trying to do, he just said that he was worried about his friend, and Sykes was caught off guard hearing this. Then Delia remembered how our protagonist would always defend others, and since this motivated him, he too stood in protection of Sykes, saying that he'd protect his friend from the bullies. 
Sykes wasn't too touched by this and Turk and the other two class A students were making fun of their friendship. Sykes then calmly walked away from them and said that he just wanted to be left alone as he had no time for their nonsense. The teachers were bored hearing all this arguing and so they said that it was time for their extracurricular test to begin and then told them to get in the magic circle that then sent them flying all around the forest, scattering them and placing them in random places. As soon as our protagonist landed, he noticed a different atmosphere in the forest and then the first thing he did was to use his magic to analyze his surroundings where there were magical waves being sent from him with which he tracked down where different monsters and even students were. Recognizing Kite's magic flow he also quickly found her but since she was pretty far away from him he quickly rushed towards her. Meanwhile we see that Delia came across some of his classmates but they were unlucky because there was a lot of monsters attacking them because they came across a layer. But just as they thought that they were done for, something burned the monsters and when teary eyed Delia looked up, he saw Sykes in front of him as he was the one that saved them. And a bit later, we see that our protagonist finally found Kite and was now helping her practice against the monsters, but she was aware that if he came any later, she'd be done for. And right as our protagonist was explaining to Kite that nobody should be alone in this forest, he saw Delia frantically running towards him. After asking him about Sykes, Delia told him that Sykes stayed dealing with the monsters while they ran off as there were too many of them. When Delia showed our protagonist where Sykes was, Kyle launched himself full speed in that direction, hoping that Sykes would be okay before he arrived. And we could see that actually Sykes was at the end of his strength and was getting surrounded by a massive number of monsters. Sykes was now at the point of fighting for his life as different beasts kept attacking him, with some even injuring him. He was hurt and there seems no end to these monsters as they just kept on coming and coming and he was surrounded by them so that he couldn't even escape. Kyle was still rushing towards him the fastest he could. Sykes attacked the monsters with all kinds of fire attacks, but the circle around him was just getting tighter and he knew that soon he would lose his chance at winning this competition and the only way he realized he could get off of the situation was if he found a space to escape through, but then suddenly something grabbed a tree in front of him and snapped it in half like a pick and then he saw a huge pig-like monster which he immediately recognized as an orc which wasn't a good thing for him definitely. Without giving him any time, the orc started rampaging, trying to hit Sykes that was barely able to escape its attacks, and as if things couldn't get any worse, some goblins attacked him from the back, catching him off guard. He got hit and was losing consciousness as he looked at the orc rushing towards him, and he also imagined A-class students mocking him even more after this, but then suddenly his mind shifted and he started worrying about his classmates, hoping that they had escaped. But then, when he realized this, he couldn't believe himself being concerned with other people when he was the inheritor of a great family, someone that always thought of himself as the best of the best. Like my voice cracks are the best of the best of the best. Anyways, every time he would think about his goals and his selfish attitude, our protagonist's smiling face would appear and now he got grabbed by the goblins and he was still thinking how from the time he met the students from the class F, he changed and he became more compassionate. And right then the orc smacked him really hard that he flew back and as he was falling to the ground, he was thinking to himself that this change didn't seem all that bad after all. And now as he calmly accepted that he'd lose this competition as the orc was swinging its club at him the hardest it could, something spun the orc in the air really fast and we could hear someone telling Sykes that he still had time, adding an apology for being late, which was actually our protagonist. Sykes was shocked seeing Kyle there and when our protagonist saw Sykes in such a bad shape, he felt pretty angry and so telling Sykes that he'd take care of the rest, he walked up in front of the monsters and then started conjuring up his wind magic that made it really difficult for the monsters to move. We could then see that by closing his eyes, our protagonist could distinguish all of the monsters and target them accurately and then suddenly with the swing of his little stick, the wind arrow started pouring down on the monsters with such a force that left Sykes in awe. And it wasn't too long before Kyle's wind arrows absolutely obliterated the monsters 
that basically stood no chance. Sykes couldn't believe his eyes as Kyle eliminated all the monsters in just a moment and he just wanted to know what was the source of our protagonist's power. Right then we could see Delia who was panicking hard and running there and shouting that he'd fight as well and there were some other class F students also. And when Delia opened his eyes he realized that there were no monsters around them and so our protagonist told him that he took care of them. Sykes was baffled by Delia coming back but Delia explained that he simply couldn't abandon his friends and then Kite approached Sykes and offered him some healing potion which she had on herself as she expected herself to get hurt because of her clumsiness. Kyle was happy seeing that everyone came because they were all worried about Sykes and then Sykes remembered how before he think that his classmates were only hindrance to him and how he needed to surround himself with only strong people that would help him accomplish his goals but now this changed as he finally felt that he had some friends. And then with a mild smile, Sykes thanked everyone for saving him and his friends were happy seeing that the dude wasn't actually handicapped, that he couldn't smile. Our protagonist continued with the excitement, saying that as soon as Sykes healed up, they'd go for the final boss and then get back, but others didn't seem quite ready for this. And meanwhile, we could see Kelyura and Garden really exhausted and facing the last bosses, which were some tough looking demon like creatures that had an ability to absorb magic. A bit later, we see that our protagonist finally found the boss monsters, only to see that A-class students were engaged in battle against them. Sykes was surprised that there were two of those monsters, but at least Kelyura and Garden had the other A-class students around helping them. Sykes was pretty sure that those monsters weren't as difficult and that it would just take longer time, but our protagonist disagreed and Sykes was surprised by this response. And as they were observing, we could see A-class students fiercely fighting with Garden attacking one of the boss monsters and delivering a powerful axe hit, but he quickly had to back up as he noticed that these monsters were absorbing their magic power. However, since only the two of them realized this, the other A-class students kept attacking the boss monsters using fireballs and other attacks, but Kalyura told them to stop as it was only recovering those monsters that used their magic. And we then learned that the only way that Kalyura figured they could fight against these boss monsters was if they infused their weapons with magic and attack them that way since normal weapons would do minimal damage anyways. He was really worried about fighting against these monsters that were known as mage hunters. And it was at this moment that Kyle also figured out that these monsters could absorb magic power and Sykes was shocked saying that those types of monsters wouldn't be put in their class in the first place. While Delia and Kite were saying that as cruel as teacher Freya was she wouldn't dare doing this, Sykes knew that those students stood no chance against those monsters even if they gave it their all and so he said that he'd help them and despite Delia reminding him that A-class students were talking bad about him, Sykes insisted that it was his family's responsibility to take care of those lower than him in position. And I mean after hearing this Delia Kite and even our protagonist were kinda raised up to the max after seeing this. Kyle expected it though and then before Sykes left to help those guys out, our protagonist wanted to give something back to him which surprised Sykes but when he looked he saw our protagonist holding his magic sword and then we learned that sometimes earlier our protagonist actually asked Sykes to lend him his sword and now it seems that Kyle fixed it but not all the way as Kyle was claiming that he still needed to work on it a bit but everybody knows knows that that's some humble BS because as soon as Sykes pulled it out of its cover, the sword glue like 10,000 flipping Christmas trees and the power it contained was absolutely off the charts as it created a powerful blast and then our protagonist casually told Sykes that if he managed to get the sword spirit on his side, he'd gain power that he never thought he could have and then suddenly as the sword was completely out, a powerful spirit of some kind started to form and not too long after a full on dragon was right there in front of him which shocked him as this was a true fire dragon that had blue flames. Kyle then added that if Sykes got accepted by the spirit that his power would increase tenfold where our protagonist was even a bit worried that the dragon spirit would overwhelm Sykes. 
But just as Kyle said this, Sykes swiftly flipped that sword in an upright position and then in a ritual fashion he apologized like he meant it, adding that it was because of his weakness that the dragon spirit got hurt. And then he said with the same seriousness that he was ready to change and become much stronger, just like the dragon did if he'd allow him to use his power again and stick with him even when he becomes strong. He shouted this with such a passion that the flames went wild and started engulfing Sykes and then sparks came about and then Sykes felt that he was being accepted by the sword spirit and so he was ready and just when he opened his eyes there was Kyle extending his hand and telling him that they had work to do. And in the meantime, you could see that Kaliura and Garden were having difficult time with those powerful monsters, as Garden got blasted by one of them to the point that he even spat blood, and Kaliura was desperately attacking with his spear to defend himself, but nothing worked, as even he got smacked hard by the monster, and the end seemed pretty nigh. Look at how poetic I am. Instead of saying the end seems pretty near, I said the end is nigh, because I'm the science guy okay what the hell am i talking i'm so sorry anyways the other a-class students were shocked and kalura was telling them to get away but the a-class students didn't want to leave their classmates and so they went to them and tried helping them out but you could see that students were confused and scared as they had no clue why they came across such strong monsters or rather why their a-class was so weak that they couldn't defeat it they didn't feel like A-class students at all right now, however the monsters weren't done as they approached them and viciously swung their clubs at the remaining students and just when they thought that they were done for, Sykes and our protagonist showed up right in front of the A-class students saying that they'd handle the situation. And not just that, but A-class students were shocked to see that the other F-class students were there helping the wounded. One of them then told Sykes and Kyle about the monster's ability, but our protagonist responded that they were already aware of it. And right as he was distracted, the monster attacked him, but our protagonist already knew it and quickly changing his energy, he struck the monster back, neutralizing its attack in a second. Sykes couldn't believe that Kyle managed to counter the monster's attack with just his hands and we could see that he even sent that monster on its bum bum. This however angered the monsters and so they started aggressively roaring at our protagonist while Kyle looked like he was looking forward to this fight. Meanwhile in the dungeon management and control room for the magic forest we see the teachers are actually panicking as none of this was planned and besides injured students not being brought back to safety they even had these powerful monsters that they have no idea how did they got there in the first place. Raygat had no clue what was going on and so he started blaming Freya but when he looked at her we could see her desperately trying to use her power to break through the barrier of some kind. She then said that there was a barrier around the entire garden that didn't allow them to go through and then she added that she only had two normal type monsters as the bosses for the freshman students and she found it ridiculous that Raygat would even suggest that she'd put monsters that could actually absorb magic. Hearing this Glacia picked up that it had to be a setup and that they were deliberately separated from the students and so now she wanted to use power to get the students out somehow but Freya told her that she already gave that a try and it didn't work as the magic devices in the garden didn't work and this made her think that they were a failure if they didn't think of something and as she kept on punching that barrier with her magic she asked Rega to continue trying to connect with the magic center in the garden but she was thinking to herself how pathetic she felt for not being able to help the students and actually expecting them to be able to survive until they reached them and she especially had high hopes in our protagonist. And right then we could see Kyle blasting one of those monsters away, but the monster was still standing and it was basically because it could absorb any type of attack that even had small traces of magic on it. And our protagonist observed that it could do that because of the crystal that monster had on its chest, which was probably something someone used when it was created. Kyle thought out some plans, but he first wanted to try out filling up his body with magic, but not letting it get out. And in that way he'd strengthen his body to the max, and then he dashed for the monster aiming at the crystal and then just when he broke the crystal he then realized his magic power that immediately took down the monster. Everyone was shocked that our protagonist defeated the monster with his bare hands but on the other side we could see Sykes struggling with the other one that was left as each time he used his magic sword to cut it the monster would quickly recover because of its magic absorption ability. Sykes found himself in quite a predicament now since he didn't know how to reduce the magic 
magic from the sword so that the monster wouldn't absorb it. And just then, our protagonist called out to him and puzzlingly told him to attack the monster with the full power as it stood no chance against him. Delia was surprised with this advice, since he knew that the monster could take in all the magic, but Kyle immediately figured out that besides the first strategy where the monster could be defeated by first breaking the crystal with a physical attack and then finished off with a magic attack, there was another one more suitable for mages. And then Sykes started calling onto his sword spirit to absorb his magic and to grant him the full power and we could see both Delia and Kite really shocked seeing the transformation Sykes was going through as he was being covered in blue flames. And now that he fully charged up his attack we learn that the other strategy he was talking about was overwhelming the crystal absorption ability with even more magic than it could take and then Sykes sent an attack called Flare Saber so powerful that it caused an enormous blast as he slashed through the monster. After the attack, out of the settling flames, Sykes appeared and Delia and Kite approached him and our protagonist started praising them for defeating these difficult monsters. But as they were celebrating, Kyle was lost in his thoughts because he noticed that besides these monsters being very unexpected, the other injured and exhausted students weren't moved out like they were supposed to. And so he was sure that something else was at play there besides what was planned for them. And right as he was thinking that, his spidey sense went off and noticing a powerful attack coming at them, he instinctively in a split second put up a barrier, defending himself and the other students, but the barrier was broken by that attack. Just as everyone else realized that something was going on, two hands came out of the darkness and then that fully cloaked guy came out of the shadows, telling them that he didn't expect them to be able to beat those monsters. Everyone was shocked seeing this and just when Kyle asked him who he was, the mysterious dude ignored it and then shot some kind of dark magic into the air. Our protagonist quickly picked up that this was Shadow Barrier and this mysterious guy continued saying that even the teachers that managed to break the barrier that separated them from the students could just stand and watch. And then as he lifted up his wooden staff, bone hands started breaking from the ground and Sykes, Kite and Elia were really terrified with the cloaked guy maniacally smiling from the shadows. And the things didn't finish there as now there were countless skeleton soldiers coming from the ground that were marching towards them and as if things couldn't get any worse, Syke felt that in the middle of that skeleton army there was an even greater dark power. And just then the mysterious guy presented them with a newly formed monster, the king of the zombies, which he called the Lich King Arthas, my son. What are you doing? Succeeded you, father. I mean, this guy looked absolutely terrifying. Nothing like the real Lich King. At that moment, Kite and Delia fell to the ground, coughing up, and Sykes noticed that it was from the intense miasma that was being released by the Lich King. And even Sykes got affected by it, while our protagonist stood there completely focused as they were being surrounded by an endless number of those undead soldiers. And then the mysterious guy expressed his desire for watching them suffer, and then we could see Sykes being surrounded by those skeleton monsters, and then suddenly there was a huge blast of light that quickly engulfed everything that surprised even the mysterious guy who realized that it was the light magic. And we could see that the light was coming Coming from our protagonist as he was telling the Lich King that he couldn't care less if he considered himself a king of some country or whatever, but that it became his problem when he tried hurting his friends and then an even more intense powerful light came out of his hands as he looked at the monster. However, the mysterious guy then just started laughing and making fun of our protagonist, telling him that there was nothing that he could do against his army of zombies. And as there were some flashes coming out of Kyle hands, he was saying that he already thought about how he could deal with such a huge number of enemies and he seemed pretty certain that he could end them all in single go. The mysterious guy then got serious for a second and then he burst out laughing again, saying that nothing could defeat his soldiers with one blow and that Kyle was just a kiddo acting like some wannabe tough guy. Our protagonist then made it known to the mysterious guy that he was aware of his skeletons' weaknesses and then putting his hands down on the ground, the light started shining from it and immediately the cloaked guy recognized that this was a magic circle that was formed in just a second which was crazy even by his standards. And then looking at his friends, 
Our protagonist told them that they should forget that they ever saw what he was about to do and to their absolute shock, having all of those creatures within a range of his magic circle, he said his cheeky bite to them and then infused it with so much power that the intense light started uncontrollably bursting out of the ground, engulfing every single skeleton in there and evaporating them all into nothingness. As the attack he called the land of the light was intensifying, we could see that mysterious guy struggling to survive and he had to put up a defense so that he too wouldn't get swallowed by all that light that deleted even the Lich King out of existence among all of the miasma it brought with it. And as the magic circle now completely dominated with the light, Delia was utterly impressed with our protagonist while Kite was just grateful that Kyle was there to save them again. But seeing this we could see Sykes thinking to himself how he's still nowhere near our protagonist in terms of power. Now facing the mysterious guy that our protagonist called Red Cape, Kyle wanted to see what he'd do next since he already smacked the hell out of his skeleton servants, but the Red Cape didn't seem to lose any confidence as he just grinned and then suddenly something burst out of the ground and it was another skeleton hand and just as Sykes shouted in shock, we could see that it was Lich King coming out of the ground with his miasma once again and it looked completely unharmed. The Lich King then spoke, intensely saying that he wouldn't get hurt by the magic of that level. Sykes, Delia and Kite were flabbergasted as they saw this and then the Red Cape said that he was impressed with our protagonist's ability to produce that much magic at one time as he was pretty sure that even if there were many mages they wouldn't be able to perform that type of magic at that level but now as he grinned again he continued saying that it seemed that Kyle already shot his best shot and it failed with Lich King. Hearing this even Kyle looked slightly concerned now and Delia started working worrying that Kyle met his match, but Sykes was assuring him that Red Cape was just being over the top, but actually he was thinking to himself that he was already familiar with this type of dark mage that was known as Lich, a title he could only get by giving himself into death and darkness, and this version was even more powerful, something he remembered reading from the book as a legend and he met it in person now. Suddenly then a rot started spreading through their surroundings and slowly creeping to the rest of the forest and seeing them terrified of this, the Red Cape started with his manacle laugh telling them that they'd all die but the Lich King noticed that something was off and that his magic power was contained where it couldn't spread any further. The Red Cape was baffled by this and then our protagonist told them that it was his barrier that stopped them because he just wanted to save the rest of the forest and then giving them a cheeky wink wink he told them that he was ready for their test. Everyone including the Lich King and the Red Cape were shocked seeing our protagonist smiling in such a carefree manner in such a situation and the Red Cape thought that Kyle had to have some brain damage or something. However, this angered the Lich who then get in more serious conjured up a dark magic where the darkness became fire that had an ability to burn until it burned its target into nothingness and the red cape was gloating over the imagery of this. But then our protagonist pulled out his ultimate weapon, Ta -da 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 -da! a stick and the Lich King and the red cape just stood there completely baffled by this weird move to say the least but then when they realized that something was coming from above the red cape noticed that it was some kind of light and then kyle told him that he used his land of light and turned it into a single point and the red cape was really shocked as it was crazy to manage condensing that much power into such a small point the lich king on the other hand didn't wait for anything and formed a dark power called cursed flame and then projected it up towards Kyle's condensed light. As the cursed flame approached Kyle's light ball, the light ball suddenly shone even brighter and then following our protagonist's word, pillar of light, a huge beam of blinding light came down crashing into the dark flames and producing an incredible amount of energy around that nobody was able to look up. I am so sorry for asking you this right now in the middle of the action but please tell me is shown the correct way of saying it or am i just uh, a fool basically anyway something started happening to the lich king and then suddenly as the beam went through the flame the flame disappeared the dark barrier shattered completely and suddenly the sunshine shone shone 
through to them. On the ground, there was a black ball quickly spinning until our protagonist didn't pick it up and casually told the red cape that now nervously watched him that since the Lich King was gone, what would be his next move? And I think his next move is to summon Deathwing now, because if you played World of Warcraft, you know that after Lich King, the next expansion is but Deathwing. Yeah. <laughs> the Red Cape kept on looking at our protagonist all flustered as he couldn't believe that the Academy had someone so powerful that could use that amount of light magic that absolutely obliterated his entire undead army and on top of that even destroyed his special monster, the Lich King, in a single moment. The red cape fell to the ground all trembling and he smacked his hand to stop his shaking and he was pulling his head from frustration, not understanding what was going on. Then he asked our protagonist for his name and Kyle answered immediately, giving all of the other information like a proper student. Then taking a black stone out, the red cape guy dramatically told our protagonist that he wouldn't forget his name and just before he crushed the stone in his hands, our protagonist immediately recognized that stone is the one with the teleportation function and he immediately fired off a wind bullet as he didn't want the red cape to escape the situation. The wind bullet hit the red cape straight in... You can hear my dog now. He didn't bark in my videos for so long. <laughs> Anyways, the bullet hit the red cape straight in the head, but before he fired off another one that would finish the red cape off, the red cape's hood fell off and our protagonist could see that it was actually a kid with two black crystals imprinted on the side of his forehead. This distracted Kyle and so he didn't go for the second shot, but the red cape angrily told our protagonist that they'd meet again and then as he was covering his head with the hood again, he added that he'd finish our protagonist the next time a hundred percent and with those words he disappeared. As our protagonist was still thinking to himself about the magic stones he saw on the red cape's head, Delia suddenly hugged our protagonist from the back thanking him for saving them and Kite also joined in on this cry fest. Kyle said that he was happy just to see that they were all good and then they saw teacher Freya with other teachers running towards them and asking them about their well-being in a really concerned way. But I don't know, honestly, how concerned are you that you managed to break through just after they managed to defeat the bad guys? Why didn't you come a minute earlier? Second earlier? No, 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 you had a minute after they defeated moment after they defeated the bad guy you come in. Anyways, Freya looked all messed up, so Delia asked if she was okay, but ignoring his question, she was glad that they survived. Regat wanted to know more about the man that he saw, and Kyle told him that it was the guy who probably did all of this mess, adding that he already escaped. Our protagonist also added that that bad guy was also messing with the monsters as well, and seeing those monsters defeated on the ground, teacher Regat really wanted to know who took them down, and so our protagonist told him that it it was him and Sykes, which really shocked Raygat and made him even more curious, but Freya reminded him that they first had to take care of the students. And just as she said that, the forest's magic mechanism finally started working again and the injured students started being relocated somewhere safe. Sykes too started floating as the mechanism was about to send him away and he told them that it was probably because he exhausted his magic powers all the way, but before the magic mechanism took him, our protagonist dramatically jumped and hugged Sykes taking him down. Kite and Delia were shocked seeing this and wanted to know what was going on. Freya also looked with shock as Kyle told them that he had an intention to talk with teachers too sometimes later, but since they all went through a lot on that day, our protagonist really wanted them to return together and have a chat about everything that happened to them. However, teacher Regat wasn't happy with this as he thought that it wasn't safe because there were still some monsters roaming around the forest and so he immediately made a call with his his magic to the HQ to forcibly send all of the students back to safety. But teacher Freya was kinda undecided about this, so she asked Delia and Kite about their opinions and both of them agreed with Kyle and even when she asked Sykes who is usually emotionless, he genuinely told her that our protagonist was the reason they managed to survive and so that he'd indulge his wish. And while Kite and Delia were bothering Regat, we could see that Freya was shocked with the transformation of Sykes and 
she couldn't help but think that our protagonist had a huge impact on some of the students and also how well things turned out to be. Thinking about all this, she slightly grinned in satisfaction and then as Raygat was still in the call to pull back the students, she told him that there wouldn't be any harm in them talking stuff over, especially since things weren't entered in the log, which meant that the battle they did today didn't count at all and this usually really upset Delia while our protagonist was just thinking how he wouldn't get any magic items. After listening to all of this, teacher Rega then proceeded to ask for the evacuation to continue, adding Kyle and his friends from F class as an exception. And while Kyle and the others were celebrating and being all over Raygat for being such a super cool teacher, Raygat told Freya that since they couldn't go by themselves, that it would be her duty to accompany them and she didn't seem to mind. Our protagonist then offered Sykes to help him walk back and even though reluctantly he accepted it, which made Freya really proud as she watched them all happy like that. Sometimes later, when they came back to the academy, we see our protagonist heading to the principal's office because Freya asked him earlier to do so, even if he was tired, as the principal wanted to know what happened in the forest. And when Kyle came to the office, he was really curious about how it would be to meet the most talented person in the whole academy, and once he got in, he was welcomed by the Dumbledore looking dude that went by the name of Iliad, who could control three different elements. After their introduction, the principal Iliad asked our protagonist to recount his encounter with the caped man and also he wanted to learn how Kyle managed to take down the monster. Our protagonist felt really awkward because he didn't know how to hide the fact that he used light magic and when the principal noticed him squirming uncomfortably, he asked him about any secrets but Kyle continued denying any such allegations until someone came in the principal's office and told our protagonist that there was no reason for him to hide anything from Iliad and when he looked, he saw none other but his master, Elf Meluna, and he was shocked wondering what she was doing there. We then learned that Miluna was Iliad's friend from way back and that she told him a bunch about our protagonist already. Kyle was a bit upset that she didn't tell him about this before, but she told him that she wanted to keep it as a surprise and we then learned that the reason why she came there was because of the seal, which was the academy secret. Miluna wanted to investigate this by herself, but since there was another thing that she had to check, she wanted our protagonist to do the investigation as a favor for her. We then learned that somewhere deep down in the academy, there was a magic beast of some kind that was sealed and we also learned that this monster used to be a dragon that was ready to annihilate everyone that stepped on its land. Our protagonist was flabbergasted listening to this and then Miluna added that the place where the seal was actually hidden somewhere in the study hall of F class building which was the entrance to the seal and Kyle got even more shocked hearing this. Miluna continued saying that the reason why F class building was in such a poor condition was because there was a powerful magic placed on it to protect the seal and so it couldn't be rebuilt. Wow, there is actually some depth to this manga. I didn't expect this. Anyways, Kyle thought this whole time that that building was made to mock the F class and even though Miluna didn't deny this to be an additional reason, the real reason was the seal after all. The principal Iliad then said that they couldn't find the entrance to the seal which was an issue since they couldn't do their investigation. We then learned that besides the seal that had its own powerful magic protecting it, the F class building was also a cover for it and the entrance was never in the same spot but always moved around. Kyle then concluded that this dragon had to be really dangerous for them to lock it up like that and Miluna said that even though the legend was spread of its power, when she was there she just saw miasma. Iliad then said that the creature shouldn't worry them because it was already sealed and their main job was to check if the chains were still as strong as their protection against that powerful beast. Thinking about all this, our protagonist looked rather spaced out, but when Iliad started doubting Kyle's readiness to do this, our protagonist stepped out of it and excitedly agreed to accept their quest as he thought it was hella interesting. He looked like it was his birthday and it really shocked the principal, while Miluna expected nothing less 
advice from Kyle. And after Iliad agreed to it, he wanted to discuss the other issue about what happened in the extracurricular class, which was the main reason why he invited him to the office. Iliad wanted our protagonist to tell him every single detail about that event without hiding anything, and after Kyle told him everything he knew about the Red Cape, the Lich King, and modified monsters, the principal, bowing his head down, thanked him for saving the academy, which made Kyle really uncomfortable, but the old man Iliad said that he deserved it, and then as he wanted to give him some reward, he asked Milona for advice, and after giving it a bit of thought, she whispered something to him which surprised him, and then Iliad happily announced that our protagonist would be granted any one wish that he desired, and then he started laughing and saying that that suggestion was something that he'd expect from Miluna. The principal wanted to know what our protagonist thought about it, and then suddenly Kyle burst out of excitement, telling him that he'd definitely use that one wish when he wanted. Iliad was happy with this, and then before our protagonist left the office, the principal told him that he'd connect him with a teacher that worked on investigating the seal, as he thought that that would help him out. Meanwhile, we see the teacher Raygot was spying on them, but Milona wasn't completely unaware because she kinda noticed it. And when our protagonist went back to the common dormitory, he was welcomed by Delia and Kite, who wanted to know what was he doing in the principal's office and if he was in trouble, but our protagonist told them that everything was fine, and then Sykes also wanted to know what they discussed, but just then Kalyura and Garden showed up, looking rather uncomfortable, it's safe to say, and Sykes quickly stepped forward in defense of our protagonist, asking them what they wanted of Kyle. Kalyura then said that he just wanted to confirm if it was true that the two of them defeated those dark monsters, and when they said that they did, both Kalyura and Garden were in shock, and then Kalyura suddenly bowed down and thanked them for saving their lives. Kalyura then continued saying that he also heard that the other students from the F class helped out the other injured A class students, and then he gave a heartfelt apology to all of them for being a bully, and he also wanted Garden to do the same, and even though reluctantly, Garden also thanked them, and our protagonist was really happy with this, telling them that since they were all together in the academy, that it only made sense that they helped each other and this lifted up the awkwardness and everybody started smiling hearing this. I mean, compared to other mangas, this one actually has pretty neat character development when it comes to these bully characters because usually it would take like 50 chapters, 150 chapters for, you know, our protagonist's former bully party to realize that he's actually a good guy, who a strong guy, and they were strong because of him. And here, it's actually pretty quick. I like it. I like this character development. Anyways, back to the story. Garden was also dying of curiosity to find out how they actually defeated those monsters, and both Sykes and our protagonist said that they just hit them with all they had, but Garden wasn't happy with this answer since he wanted to hear more details on it. While Kyle was happy with how the things were going, we could see the Turk absolutely hated it as he watched them having fun and then he just stormed out of the common room. Okay, so here's your typical bully who never learns how to be a better man, basically. Meanwhile, we see the principal thinking how our protagonist was quite unique and how he felt that he could rely on him for completing the investigation properly. And his only concern was the teacher that he had to recommend to help him out with the investigation, but it was his only option. And during that time, we see at the Academy Research Tower somebody cooking up some potions, and a girl there didn't look all too happy with how the teacher named Relissa was creating a mess out of the whole laboratory since she was the one that had to clean it up at the end. But the teacher, Relissa, ignoring her remark, told her to come check her new mix that she just discovered. And while the girl named Elsie was watching her brewing her potions, a quirky look looking Relisa said that she felt a new beginning of something great was about to start. And sometimes later, one night we see our protagonist revealing the quest that he got from the principal, where he needed to investigate the secret seal. Delia was really impressed that he'd get a quest directly from the principal, but then our protagonist told them that he needed their help with this, and this really shocked them, but he just wanted them to investigate this mystery together. We could see that our protagonist used his wind barrier to hide what they were discussing from other students. 
Delia was a bit worried, since he expected that it'd be dangerous, and our protagonist confirmed that it wouldn't be as harmless, because the place became a maze, and he suspected that there would be some monsters along the way, where it would end with a sealed dragon. Even though he casually said this, we could see that both Delia and Kite were utterly terrified. He assured them that everything would be fine, but hearing all that, Delia wasn't so sure, and then Sykes came in saying that he found it interesting, as he could finally test out his new power, especially after feeling that he got stronger in the forest, and he also told Delia and Kite that they too should be a bit more confident, since they both survived it as well. Kite was still not confident, as she thought that she'd just be a hindrance to them, but since our protagonist insisted, both her and Delia accepted joining their team, which Kyle called SEAL Investigation Team. And right then he noticed that some girl was saying something outside his wind barrier, and when he cancelled his barrier, the girl we saw before with teacher Relissa, or Alicia, I don't know man, my names are not my forte when it comes to their pronunciation, I mean none of the English words are, but yeah, anyways, she was just relieved that Kyle took notice of her, but he apologized, saying that they had a secret meeting, and as soon as she heard this, she guessed that it had something to do with the academy secret. Kyle was surprised by this, and then the girl introduced herself and told him that she came to see him because she had a message from teacher Relicia. Elise continued saying that teacher Relicia wanted to see him in her research tower, and this reminded our protagonist that he was also told that he'd be introduced to a teacher, and so he accepted to go with her, but on their way there, Elise noticed that all of his friends were also coming with them, which kinda baffled her, but our protagonist explained that he already told everything to his friend, and that he wanted them to go if she didn't mind. She gave it a bit of thought, and then agreed with him, adding that teacher Relicia wouldn't care either way, and that she might get even more thrilled about it. They were both happy with this, and so they continued, and not too long after, they had already arrived at a research tower, and they were all amazed seeing it, where Delia didn't even know that such a place existed in the academy, and Elise, who was third year, told them that not many first years were coming there. Upon entering the tower, there was a huge stair that went in a circle all the way to the top, and they were worried that they'd have to climb it themselves, but Elise said that they'd be taken there by magic, and that they just needed to follow her. And then basically we see that the stairs worked like some sort of magic elevators and they were all having fun while being taken up. But just as they were reaching the top, the whole tower shook, which gave a serious scare to everyone, especially Delia and Kite, and we soon find out that it wasn't an earthquake, but rather crazy teacher Relicia doing her experiments. And we could see that as soon as Elise opened the doors to Relicia's research lab, a ton of smoke came out like she entered Snoop Dogg's room, and Elise was frantically opening the windows while yelling at the teacher for failing her experiments because she did it by herself. And we could see quirky teacher Alicia on the ground saying that she was pretty certain that this time she'd be successful. Elise was really frustrated that Relicia created such a mess, especially now when they had guests over, but Relicia seemed to completely forget about the guests, so Elise, all annoyed, had to remind Relicia about the principal's announcement for the guests. Teacher Relicia then started bowing down and apologizing for forgetting about it, but Elise didn't like her doing that because she looked scary that way, but Relicia also thought that Elise was scary most of the time. Before anything else, Elise wanted them to clean the place for the guests, and our protagonist, saying that he'd also help, used some kind of wind magic and cleaned everything in just a moment, which really shocked Elise and Teacher Relicia as well. Like, he literally arranged all the books back in their bookshelves and even fixed broken items. My bro got them cheats, man. <laughs> Elise was telling Relicia that this was her first time seeing such a wind magic, and the teacher just stood there all quiet for a moment, and then suddenly she jumped on our protagonist, praising him for being so amazing and frantically asking him a bunch of questions about his powers. Elise had to pull back this crazy woman off of our protagonist because she was just too much. A bit later, as the situation calmed down, 
Teacher Alicia was apologizing to our protagonist, telling him that she didn't want him to have a bad opinion about her, but Kyle was perfectly fine with her behavior earlier, as he too understood the feeling of curiosity she felt, as he'd behave the same way, and she was really happy with him telling her this, because she felt like she met somebody that can understand her, and others were thinking that both of them were kinda crazy. Kyle then introduced himself and told her about the reason he was there, and as soon as he mentioned the Academy seal, Relicia went crazy again, hectically searching through her books, and Elise was furious as the teacher was creating a mess again. As she was ravaging through those books, teacher Alicia excitedly said that she risked her life investigating what was known as the oldest and most mysterious case of the academy. She then told him that in case that he'd be working with her, that she was happy to tell him everything she found about it, but in return she wanted him to also tell her stuff that he learned, and they were all surprised seeing her being serious like that, and again we see that somebody was spying on them. And we learned that the previous night when Miluna had a secret discussion with the principal, that besides expressing their worry about the caped man, they were also pretty certain that they had spies in the academy. They also realized that the people spying on them were probably aware of their investigation and wanted to use it for a purpose that they knew about, and as it was dangerous for Miluna to investigate this, she wanted the principal to have faith in our protagonist, as Miluna was confident in him as he could use all of the attributes and was the only person she accepted as a student in her long life. When our protagonist told teacher Relicia everything about what he knew, she started tripping as she couldn't believe that the entrance to the seal was in the F-class building hall of all the places in the entire academy. Kyle told her that he too was surprised after learning this, and then Relicia was saying that only the F-class teacher and the students were allowed to enter that building, and then she suddenly jumped and started going off on her things, looking for something and telling Elise that the time for using their magical tool that was made for the SEAL investigation has finally come. And then putting on some normal looking glasses, she said this was her weapon against the secrets of the magic. I'm a little bit sick so that's why my voice is cracking and my throat is a little bit sore, my voice is a little bit sore, it sounds sore. I mean, anyways, let's continue. For some reason seeing her wearing those glasses impressed both Elise and Kite as they thought that they fitted her really well. Our protagonist was confused with what they do with those glasses and teacher Elise explained that they could find the secret entrance as long as they were made with magic as those glasses could see magic. She also added all excited that since she didn't know where to look, she could never find that entrance, but now she was pretty sure that they'd find it in no time. She was way too thrilled for this investigation, and despite Elise warning her, Relicia hippity hopped straight into a pillar, as those glasses didn't really help her much with seeing normal world stuff, and so Elise took the glasses, saying that she'd be the one using them to find the entrance for the time being. And after settling that, they then went to the F study hall in search for the hidden magical entrance. Bros, I'm so sorry, we have to end it here for now. This is the last chapter and I didn't even recap the entirety of it because I'm so tired, because I'm sick. My voice is a little bit, my throat is a little bit sore, so that's my voice sounds a little bit rough as well. I'm so sorry. There's half more chapter left of this manga. When the new chapter comes out, I'm going to recap this half and the new chapter as well if you want to see that let me know in the comments below i'm so sorry one more time bros i hope you understand always stay awesome like this and peace